I'm Edgar Kramer from Sunset Australia, and I'm here with Kiat Lowe from Dante Audio. Hello, Kiat. Hello, Edgar. Nice. It's a pleasure to see you again. Good to see you too. I wanted to, uh, Kiat, I wanted to ask you firstly uh, about the re reasonably new designs that uh, Dante Audio has uh, has launched. Two, two new ones. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Yes, we have uh, launched the uh, new Dantec Senator, which is a uh, completely, totally different looking loudspeaker to all the previous Dantec. Uh, and we have also launched uh, our new Princess. And uh, with the Senator, it is readily available to ship. And the Princess are on a made-to-order made basis. Okay. So you are you conducting any fine tuning to the princess? Is that is that, is that why it's a made to order basis? Or yeah, well, the the princess should have been uh, should have been available uh, twelve months, eighteen months ago, but uh, we are very critical with the parts that we are having made for us, and uh, specifically drivers. Uh, it all has to perform exactly what we want or else it does not fit into the first order design criteria. If it shifts, if it if it is not as flat, if it doesn't roll off as predictably, uh, it suddenly becomes unusable. And, and that's one of the characteristics and limiting factor of a first order crossover. Okay, that leads on to the question I wanted to ask you next, which is, uh, Dante Audio had very specific philosophies uh, used across across all their products, um, and I wanted to ask you how many of those philosophies and technologies have you uh, kept for the new Dante speakers? A hundred percent. We have followed uh, what we we coined the the term uh, the John Dunleavy Prime Directives. Right. And he has laid specific guidelines of how a pair of Dante is to be designed, and we're following it completely right to the to the dot. And the first the first one is mechanical time alignment. Unlike other speakers, you you will see our speakers have uh, the tweeter being shifted back mid range, and then the woofer to the front. And uh, for those people who are not familiar with this design, uh, it's actually to align acoustic center of all drivers on one plane. So when a signal is being transmitted, it all arrives to a predetermined distance or what we call the, uh, the, uh, the prime listening position at the same time. And that gives it coherency, and which is a set, one, of the, one of the important character of a, uh, of a Dantec loudspeakers. It is coherent. And, because it's coherent, it is pulse coherent. If it's not pulse coherent, it will never be coherent because one pulse will be going back, one pulse will be going forward, and uh, well, it's not going to work. True. And the other thing is that it's a minimum phase loudspeakers. At, at crossover point, it virtually is minimum phase. Now, why minimum phase? You will find that uh, a lot of Dantec loudspeakers are very easy to drive. Having said that, uh, people people challenge us frequently on that, but that's not because of the speaker design. Because when we look at our specification and our our measurements, we we look at it and say it should be easy to drive, because it is not uh, demanding uh, power from the amp. Right. So we would it's an amp that is not coming to the party, not the loud speakers. And most important thing that John actually specified is that a Dantec pair allowed, a Dantec design has to be a seal box. And there's a reason for it. Uh, seal box are very fast. Uh, it, go, it, can, it, it, it potentially can go low, but to do that, it needs the, it needs the air space within the cabinet. Sure. And usually that relates to it's a big cabinet. Of course, yeah, and the slow—it's a slow roll-off. So, so I guess it, it uh, subjectively it does sound as though it's going deeper. 
than lower. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and and, and, and you'd be surprised, and we were surprised initially, that the Twitter was actually affecting uh, the 12 inch woofers. Wow. That has to perform perfect. We cannot, we cannot. Look, there are many, many drivers available in the market and supposedly good drivers, but we couldn't use it. Uh, if you look at the response and you look at the Dantic, you look at the Dantic driver raw response, you can say, wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. But you look at some of the premium uh, driver response and you say, hmm, geez, what are we going to do with that massive breakup? And uh, basically, that means that we cannot use it. Uh, a first order is uh, 6 dB per octave. And it's going to be reflected on the, on the, on the response. Of, of, of the driver, I guess. So that obviously... Of the, of, of the, of the, of the speaker. Of the speaker. Yeah. So that so obviously... Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say that obviously places limitations in terms of uh, the type of drivers that you can use, and also uh, you, you'd have to have fairly strong partnerships with driver de developers so they can understand what's required in a Dantec speaker. Fortunately, fortunately for the brand name Dantec, uh, many many uh, old uh, brand names relate to Dantec. Uh, how shall I put it? When John Dunleavy first launched Dante, uh, I think uh, Dante was Dante was actually beating the path to real to high end audio, and John was very in fact John was very proud of that, and uh, that's why um, we have we get assistance from uh, parts manufacturer that's that are happy to, to modify drivers to suit our, our need. In fact, one, one driver company said to, said to us, and uh, he said that if it works for Dante, it works for everybody else. That's a great thing to, to, to know. And uh, I guess in some ways you're actually uh, helping the driver manufacturers with uh, developing your drivers and, and they benefit because they can uh, apply those lessons they learn to drivers that are available to other manufacturers as well. Yeah, well, uh, I won't mention names, but uh, we had uh, one of the company had to in, had to uh, engage uh, uh, a very audiophile consultant to work with them on mm -hmm. one of our mid-range drivers, mm -hmm. and uh, I was part of that. Uh, our CC in the development, right. and uh, one of the statement of that that guy said, "This is the best." mid-range driver I have ever measured and he's right. That's, that's, uh, that's fantastic, that's great to know because it, uh, I really look forward to, to uh, reviewing uh, at least Senator to start off with uh, in the near future. Now I wanted to ask you, the Princess is a very large speaker, it's probably very close to the size of the, of the iconic Sovereign that Dante almost, is, that, almost. Almost, yeah. That Dante is very famous for. So I was going to ask you: Are there any plans to uh, to launch with a new, uh, brand new sovereign? Most definitely. As soon as the princess is up and running, where uh, it can be easily manufactured without without uh, me having to worry about it. Uh, we will we will start on the new designs for the for the senator, and in fact we have been looking at various drivers, uh, and uh, we're happy to know we're happy to to say that we have a lot of drivers lined up for the final project. Sounds ominous. The final project. The final <laughs> project. Yes. <laughs> okay. On that note, I'll do the the final goodbye with you, Kia. I'm very wary about this, you know, because uh, John has got such high expectations. Yes. And, uh, uh, <laughs> He's watching from above. And 
Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We are very worried about the John Donnelly curse. Sure. <laughs> okay, I'm sure it'll work out fine. And, 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 and when, if the sovereign, do it. yes, if, if if the sovereign makes the same impact now as the 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 original sovereign uh, made in high end audio, uh, we in for something very very special. So uh, I look forward to that. Okay, Kia, thank you very much oh, for your time today. And uh, I look forward to talking to you, to you again soon. Okay. Nice talking to you, Edgar.